F1 content creators panel. I am joined by Tom, Vince, Ben, and George, all content creators from the F1 content creator series. Uh, as you can probably tell, about two hours ago, I couldn't even speak. I basically lost my voice. But luckily, I'm joined by content creators, so they're going to do most of the heavy lifting. So to start off, for those who don't know, Ben, what the hell is the F1 content creator series? Uh, F1 Creator Series is uh, a series where we join together in a league racing scenario. It's half serious, half sweaty. <laughs> um, <laughs> depends on who you are, I guess. How sweaty uh, are you on a scale of like dry to? Um, it's I don't know. Pool. I can, I, it's I, a swimming I, pool. <laughs> I vary, to be honest. I started off super casual, and now it's just got the, the level is raised every race, yeah, yeah. every season. See, I've seen you two especially grinding this series. <laughs> yeah, he's my nemesis. Uh -huh. Ben is my nemesis. We, we I, I hate you. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ben, tell us how it started, right? It was the brainchild of a few content creators who have got together, and we're going to talk about what it's become. But tell us the origin story. I'm actually not well poised to answer that. I think maybe Tom. I joined pretty late, if I'm honest. He has done more races than me in it, but um, I, I mean, as all sim racing series start, it starts as just some friends together. Um, we, we, yeah, we were literally just doing some fun races on the F1 game, um, uh, and all, all of a sudden we got some more content creators involved. Uh, it was not even called the Creator Series as it's called today. Um, it was actually called the Choco League. Uh, Dirk yeah. Chocolate, who is not here right now. It's very sad that he is not here. Yes, <laughs> but he still races, so uh, yeah. that's nice. When he wants uh, to. Yeah, <laughs> when he can be bothered, uh, and and yeah, it, it grew out as something something huge. Um, I mean, we have like when we when we go live for the creator series, we have like thousands of people watching us uh, race each other and uh, get mad at each other or sometimes love each other. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's gr it's grown massively, and and I mean, uh, actually, I mean, all of us here together, we didn't even talk too much to each other, and now we're like besties. <laughs> So it's kind of a novel concept, okay? So there's a lot of sim racing leagues that exist. Um, and they're, they're fairly well viewed if you look at the likes of WOR and PSGL. They get, they get really decent uh, viewership. But the difference, I think, with this series is that you can truly get behind the, the lens, if you like, on the people that you're watching race, okay? It's kind of like the sim racing version of Drive to Survive. Right? So what Drive to Survive has done for F1 I believe, you know, to make a smaller scales at the moment, the F1, uh, so the content creator series has kind of done the same thing for league racing because people can watch your races and they can understand the stories. And perhaps sim racing in the past has suffered a little bit in that it's difficult to follow the stories of the individuals racing. You don't really know who they are. And so there's no real emotional attachment when you're watching one car overtake another. Whereas with you guys, people watch you guys stream. So they feel like they, they know you, they understand you, they know what your, your ticks are, they know what you're good at, what you're bad at. And so when they watch the F1 Content Creator Series, they're really watching a story. And, I, and Tom, I'm going to put it to you, yeah. that I would say that you have elevated sim racing uh, leagues and sim racing broadcasts from streams into entertainment. Oh, definitely. I mean, um, every time we, 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 we go live, I mean, we, we do our own shows, you know, our own streams. And um, they always ask us, oh, when, when is the creator series going live again? You know, when are you guys taking each other on again? Um, and normally, like, a season takes around 16, 16 races, 16 weeks. Every single week, uh, we have, like, a, a race on, on the Saturday evening. And um, yeah, it's really cool to see how the story unfolds. Like, we started the, this season that just finished, actually, um, in at the launch of the F1 game about a few months ago. And it only finished last week. Last week. Yeah, exactly. And, and the championship... No spoilers. No, exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I will say I was very good in that season. Uh, uh, I was one of, uh, one of the uh, best driver, if not the a best. Little, a little too good, if you ask me. Uh, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really cool. And, and Ben, for example, even did a, uh, an, an analysis stream. So he, he did four hours. Four hours after, <laughs> in one go... He did analyzing um, his season, 16 races in a row, and each race takes about one and a half hours, uh, where we do a full Formula One Grand Prix, so say like 72 laps after one another. It's, it's very sweaty. Even if you're not pushing, it, you can imagine you get very, very tired. It, it's kind of interesting because it, it, it definitely seems to bridge the gap between kind of esports streaming and entertainment, and I feel like maybe that's kind of where it started. but. You're all competitive, right? It's kind of ended up being quite 
quite a competitive series and just the nature of the fact that your streamers and you all race so much, it's, it's to a really high quality. You were claiming before that you're like, you know, half a second off the esports drivers. So it's, it's, it's kind of like the F1 esports series, except you kind of perhaps know the drivers slightly better. And, which, which <laughs> is really fun, um, imagine team radios, like in Formula One, but then the other driver can hear you. So we are, <laughs> we are, we are all in a, in, a, in a radio call with each other. And uh, let's say if we crash each other out, we're like, hey, man, what are you doing, dude? And, and everybody, you know, uh, gets, gets along, but also sometimes does not necessarily get along. Yeah, the it's voice chat is chaos. I've yes. watched uh, like, quite a lot of things. Yes. And the voice chat that comes across all of the streams at once is absolute chaos. So, so GB, right, from your perspective, how has this affected you as a, as a streamer? How has it affected your channel? And how have your viewers reacted to you being a part of it? Really well, really well. I, I think it's, uh, we touched on it earlier, but, but um, uh, we started this knowing that obviously eSports has got its own side. It's, it's very sweaty. It's, you know, uh, athletes at the top of their level. And then we didn't really have anything where it was kind of bridging that gap of bringing that fun side as well and wanting to kind of bring that friendship element to it. So especially my community and my side, I've really enjoyed kind of me being in a competitive racing space, but also with these guys and in the VC and, and kind of, yeah, um, getting vocal with each other, both good and bad in races, <laughs> so. And have you seen kind of like a, like a cross-pollination between communities? Like when people are watching, let's say somebody from Ben's community is watching and you happen to be on your own, whether that's out the front or out the back, wherever that might be. Do people then, are, people, are you finding that people are jumping across to watch the other streams from the other creators? Absolutely. Almost and like you would on Sky when you can flick through. Yeah, so, and it, and it even goes up a level because it's not, it's not just coming across different channels, but then you see little spies in chats of like telling each other each, each, people's batteries and tires and, and oh, Ben's I'm, got this much battery left. And I'm very guilty of this. So <laughs> I will actively ask my viewers to go and spy on Tom's stream, GB stream, <laughs> tell me their battery level, tell me their tire wear, where are they on track? What tires are they on? Like it's it's really in depth, and we're also like in intertwined, and yeah, um, it's it's the highlight of the week for, for all of us, and we just absolutely love it. It's it's pure content. Yeah, like Vince, it looks like a lot of fun, right? This this series does look a lot. Although there's a, there's a couple of like sweaty guys in there as well. <laughs> it does look like a lot of fun. I'm part of your your Discord group, and I see the the, the paddock that you have, and you'll be on there chatting for hours and hours and hours after the race. Has it? Has it kind of allowed you to kind of get an insight into how other streamers work and share stories with, with streamers? Do you think it's elevated your game? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think a lot of networking has come from doing Create Series as well. A lot of um, discoverability for streamers as well. You know, we have people come in from, you know, lesser viewers and stuff. They come in as reserve. It gives them some exposure. So you actually learn a lot from the higher viewer guys, but you also actually learn a lot from the lesser guys. You know, maybe you can get an idea from them that you can share or they can share with you. It's it, I think it's a just fantastic place to be able to network with everyone. And yeah, um, yeah it's a lot of fun. I think it's a, a really good way of actually bridging the gap to real F1 as well, in a sense. In, um, you know, I've actually had quite a few people come into my stream or I'm sure the other guys in it as well, but people have said they actually got more into F1 because of the creator series, you know? Yeah. They saw that people were having fun, but also taking it in a semi-serious way. So, mm. um, you know, a lot of people actually started watching F1 purely because of the creator series, to be honest with you. Um, and like you said earlier, he's also bridging the gap to esports as well. It's that middle point between uh, the serious stuff and also the casual stuff. So um, yeah, I think it's just got a really good balance to it. And it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to partake in weekly. Yeah, so you're saying that you're learning a lot from, from the other streamers and you're sharing tips. So there'll be a lot of people here who are perhaps, the, uh, uh, are perhaps considering streaming or have started streamers or maybe they're very experienced streamers in the, off, uh, in the audience or, or, or watching online. Pick one or two things that you think you've learned from this series, which has elevated your streamer game. Um, consistency on the track is the main thing. Um, it, it, I think when you get to a 100% race, you come at the end of it and it's, you feel very tired. You're like, oh, that, was, that took a lot out of me. So um, I think practicing is obviously the main thing as well. Um, you don't need to practice a lot for something like this certain thing, but I think most of us will jump onto the rig like what, an hour before, maybe two hours before, do a little bit of practice and head straight in. Um, so I think practicing, um, being consistent, are the two main things that you really need in a big race like that. That's really interesting because I was expecting you to talk about uh, the qualities of a streamer and the entertainment and perhaps the engagement. But actually, it's really interesting that in sim racing, 
because it's longer form, especially when you're doing a 100% race, you crush out in corner one, people aren't going to be Sorry, watching yeah. you tagging around 30 seconds behind everyone else for a full hour and a half. So actually, it's one of those, uh, it's one of those games where you have to be pretty good at it if you want to retain an audience. Yep. Does that in itself put more pressure on you to Absolutely. get good? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, everyone's watching everyone. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, everyone's watching everyone's stream, right? So, um, you know, the publicity comes from doing well, essentially. Um, which, you know, that's when it gets a bit serious and a bit sweaty and a little bit of words are exchanged and stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's all fun. It's all games. And uh, we're there to have a good time. We're there to race against each other, make content out of it. That's the main thing. Yeah. Um, and increase exposure and help everyone out, basically. I actually want to add to what Vin said earlier, of course, um, trying to like bridge the gaps between real racing and, and sim racing. What is really cool about the creator series is that we have our own silly season, um, right. like, in, like in real Formula yeah, One. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we all, we're all driving for different F1 teams. Some of us are actually affiliated with uh, F1 teams, like GB, for example, with Aston Martin, uh, me with uh, Alpine Esports. Um, but it's really cool because we have like a silly season before the season starts. It was actually, it's, it's over now. Uh, and there's always some, some crazy moves uh, between <laughs> drivers. One of them was right here. Hello. The, uh, the, the runner up in the championship going from uh, McLaren to Ooh. Ferrari. So let's see if that's going to be uh, an improvement. <laughs> Let me cook these strategies. I'm going to make Ferrari great again. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben, talking of strategies then, you've done four hours of analysis of the creator series, right? So. You know better than anyone else what is working in it, what isn't working, what people are enjoying, what people aren't enjoying. So looking ahead to the next season, how are you going to keep it entertaining, right? Because entertain, entertainment is all about you know, refreshed ideas, newness. How, what are you going to do differently next time to keep this fresh? Um, I, th something we really tried recently was Mystery Grand Prix, where um, we personally didn't know the race that we were going to heading into the, the session. And so that made it really unpredictable. No one could really guess the strategy um, or cur curate a setup that was going to be really dialed in for that circuit. And so it was a great leveler, I'd say, for all of us. Um, but, you know, we've been constantly striving to try new uh, formats. Uh, we do the odd sprint race here and there. It's a reverse grid championship. Um, and it's only about 10, 12 laps, but it's absolutely carnage. So things like that are really good. We do intermediate championship uh, where we oh, stick yeah, on, yeah, on, the, on the dry and... It's just, it's good fun. So I think going down the route of like the odd format change here or there, um, but also just racing closely and, and, and trying to do the best you can and watching everyone grow and everyone get better. The level keeps stepping up. That in itself is where the, um, the uniqueness comes and yeah. the racing quality just gets so better and better. What he was talking about, the intermediate championship, every Q1, so we do Q1, 2 and 3, and we drive on the intermediate tire that's supposed to be driven on the rain. All of us, for one lap at the start of Q1, and whoever gets the fastest lap in Q1 on the intermediates gets a point in the championship. So We, we should do the opposite in uh, wet conditions. Go on soft tires for a lap. <laughs> yeah. What about a soft no, championship no, as well? No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> so, GB, like, it, it sounds like the, the real success in this is the fact that Although maybe you are, you're actually presenting this as not taking this too seriously. It's almost like putting the fun back in, in sim racing, because I think a lot of sim racing, a lot of sim racing leagues, a lot of sim racing series, and perhaps even some sim racing streamers would admit that perhaps they're guilty of being a little bit too serious, right? So is this kind of, for you personally, is this like an outlet to get creative more so than you can elsewhere because you know the numbers are going to be buoyed by the fact that it's the content creator series and you're sharing viewership and you're sharing in the success of the format. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I was going to touch on this as well, that, that it, it's almost a different mentality when you're racing because we're, as these guys said, you're doing a full 100% race. Yes. You know, we know that everyone is, is a similar pace as well. Yes. But you're also, when you're racing, you're, you're having a mind on how am I interacting with my chat? How can I, you know, interact in the VC? So it's, you know, when, when esports drivers or, or, or you know, uh, competitive league races are driving, they're just fully focused on the race. Whereas obviously we're kind of also thinking, oh, well, how can I annoy that person? Or like, you know, how can I make some interaction off this? So um, yeah, it's definitely a different, a, a different mindset. And I think uh, I, you know, personally, I've, I've learned quite a few different skills from from previous style of content. So mm. yeah, it's been really useful. It's interesting to me to watch how tribal it is. And you can see in your individual streams how you're like jeering on like your own, your own viewers to kind of back you. Now, the interesting thing about this series 
is that you also have, as well as having your individual streams, you also have a properly broadcast stream with commentators like you know, George Morgan, right? So you, have, you, you kind of have this, uh, this choice as a viewer of where you want to watch it from. Do you want to watch the, the broadcasted version or do you want to watch the individual? Like, so to flip this then, to, to, to perhaps explore a challenge, this seems to be one of the most innovative, creative sim racing series that I've seen. However, it's also the most divided in terms of the audiences because there's so many different places to watch it from. So, Tom, like, what, what do you think? Do you think that is an issue? And if so, like, how can you overcome it? Or is it, is it, is it an issue at all? Uh, there's always going to be, obviously, when you're racing, you, it's always competitive, right? Um, we're all friends with each other behind the scenes. And like, as a viewer, you're, 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 you're part of a story, you're part of an adventure, trying to see if you can beat all the other content creators that are obviously also very fast. So there's always going to be a little bit of friction uh, between each other. But I mean, between each other, we always, I mean, it's just a quick fist bump, maybe if we have a big crash, it will be a bit of a more firm fist bump, you know. But um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, there's never like a, uh, any, any uh, bad intent between each other. But yeah, obviously, as a viewer, uh, it might seem like that because when we're in the, in the moment, mm -hmm. we, you know, we, yeah, we're, we're going to be angry. Like, what are you doing, well, the man? The rivalries are more personal, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they can be. But like Tom said, in the heat of the moment, like, it can seem very... Um, like there's a lot of friction, but what the viewers don't see is after the race, we all chill out in <laughs> yeah. Discord and VC and we play poker or games or whatever like after and we're all just chilling and, and being mates. So um, it's never as bad as what people people think I, it is. I, I find that it's, it, it's more the viewers themselves that you know yeah. might be on one of our side that, that, that are more passionate than, than we are. Whereas yeah, you know, we're just like, oh yeah, no, no problem, don't worry about it. You know, whereas the viewers are you know kind of going at it in, in the chat. So yeah, yeah. And what's funny, Ben and me were in a championship fight last season, and for the championship finale, the one that decided it all, we were practicing together. You know, just like a, a, few, <laughs> a few hours before the, the night before, we were practicing together. We were like, oh, what setup are you running? <laughs> oh yeah, and you know, like, I mean, sometimes we were a little Monza, bit secret. Max to, wing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Max wing angle, yeah. Uh, but we know from each other that we're not that dumb. Definitely you know? a full stopper. I <laughs> yeah, <this one. laughs> but uh, yeah, it's all fun and games in the end but it's it's really cool to see how um how people you know get invested in in um in the whole season and also in e each race because it is really uh yeah an, an adventure every single time we go we go live for the creator series so that's great okay great that you all get on collaborative love that let's stoke up some controversy right vince what's been the biggest drama this season and whose fault was it <laughs> usually it's always ben's fault <laughs> i agree um I'd say one of the, the, the biggest dramas. That's a good question, actually. I don't actually know. I can't think of the top of my head. We've had a big I, drama. I know. I came together with you one time, and you were like, no, what are you doing, Tom? When was that? I went three wide in, uh, at Monza at Ascari. On the entry of Ascari, I went on the inside of two drivers, and you were one of them. Yeah. You was were I on the wrong end? I think so. <laughs> I'll say that one then. <laughs> I, th I, think, I think, personally, I, I feel like the biggest drama was, was, was these two at the end. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, we kind of had, had such a big build-up across the season. Um, and Tom, I don't know how far ahead you were at one point, but you were, you were over a race win ahead of Ben, and it kind of seemed like it was slipping away and Tom was kind of cruising to an easy championship win. Yeah, he was reeling me in. He was reeling me in every single race. Yeah. Seven races in a row, he outscored me. I just about hung on at going into the last race uh, with a points advantage. And then in the last few laps, I mean, it, it has happened now. You can watch it back. You should watch it back. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he came back from basically an impossible situation to actually have a chance of winning. And then he flipped and hit me on the straight as well. <laughs> I, I got, yeah. It was proper like Abu Dhabi 2021 vibes. <laughs> yes. With like five, six laps to go, I was P14. You were like second or third. And then the biggest pile up of the season happened. I got up to fifth. <laughs> and then on the last lap, you and me were side by side heading into turn one. And you were trying to box me in behind someone else. I kind of edged you out a little bit, and I got up the inside and like got two places in one. It was incredible. And he, he overtook me at that point, so <laughs> you can imagine the nerds were like crazy. And uh, if he but, crashed, if he crashed, it would have been game over for you. Yeah, I mean, if you, want, if you want to know what happened in the end, then I, I, I'll tell you, you should watch back the, the Jeddah finale of, of the season. I won't, I won't spoil it. Now, the interesting thing is, right, races like this and stories like this are happening every single day, every single week in leagues 
across the world it, on, on all games, on all platforms. Like, league racing is great that you have these stories and people who are racing within the leagues, they have these emotional connections with each other and they're absolutely loving it. And they broadcast and they broadcast to kind of 20, 30 people. But the, the, the great thing about this series is that you're having this discussion about an incident that happened on track, but because of the nature of the content creator series, people actually care what's going on inside this series because you have genuine communities in the same way as when you watch F1, McLaren has a genuine community, you know, the Tifosi are a genuine community. Like you have all of this, these, these very tribal groups of people caring what's going on. And I think that's probably why you've become one of the most successful sim racing series in such a short time. But with that in mind, GB, where can this go? Well, I mean, that's a great question. Uh, who knows at, at this point, you know, we're, we're obviously hoping to get as many people involved as we can. Um, and I think, you know, we recognize that. I think uh, we, we, we've just brought in a new point system where now uh, the top 15 drivers can get points. Um, so that, that, uh, that there's a much bigger, it's all, I think it's like nearly double the amount of points being dished out overall. Um, and that's just to try and kind of include more in, in a championship fight, uh, it, you know, include communities more. Um, so yeah, in terms of in terms of where it, where it can go, I mean, I mean, there's no reason why we can't absolutely escalate it further. Uh, I mean, we've already had an F1 driver in the series. We had Joe Guan Yu join us, and I had an incident with him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it does show how far this series has come in that short amount of time. You know, the fact we've already had an F1 driver who's been involved in it and has said that he wants to get more involved in it really just shows how far we've come already. And it's a, it's a very open question about how far it can truly go because we don't, no one really knows the limits. It, it really is one of those things where the, you know, the, the sky is the limit, essentially. Um, you know, there's, there's so much more that can be done that we know that can be done. And after that point, it's just be about being more creative, about finding new ideas, being fresh. If we do the same thing over and over, of course, that's when it's getting repetitive and boring. But, you know, we're bringing in new things every season. We bring in new content creators, we bring in new communities. You know, it keeps things fresh and it keeps things fun. That's the most important thing. Personally, I don't see any reason why it can't be like a, a curtain raiser to F1 Esports. Yeah. Like in uh, Gran Turismo, they have like a Pro-Am series. They race mm. just before the official like hardcore racing happens. Why can't we uh, open, you know, and, and get the viewers warmed up before they see the proper pros go I mean, racing? I mean, maybe F1 Esports should be our, uh, our intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's interesting, right? Because if you, look at, if you look at where sim racing appears to be going, if you look at series like the ESL R1 uh, series on Rensport, they seem to be point, uh, going towards a shorter format. So short, sharp races, heat systems, brackets. It's, it, you know, it's five, 10 minute shootouts because the, the assumption there is that people have short attention spans. Now, you've totally defied that theory because you're doing 100% races that even like PSGL and WR, like, you know, that's not, where, that's not where they tend to go because they know that people's attention spans are shorter. So I put it to you that perhaps the content creator series has defied that because as long as you're creating mini stories within the race that people actually care about, it doesn't matter what the format is as long as you're getting all this short form entertainment within the longer race. I think esports and all these higher tier leagues are kind of giving the game a bit of injustice because the best racing is in 100% races, particularly with the new tire model now, where new tires are the meta. Uh, with safety cars and strategies, red flags now brought into the mix, there are so many different ways you can dissect a race and come out on top. And that's what's personally brilliant about our series is that you know we could be on a four-stop race and you could win the race. Like the, the tire... The, being on new tires and having more time to make up the difference with new tires is is crazy. Yeah, and sometimes there is multiple races within a race because uh, as a, as we're all content creators, you know, we make mistakes every now and then. So uh, sometimes we bring out the safety car and then the whole grid resets. So it's like boom, all right, next race. Basically, it's the same track. You know, we're still driving. But from, let's say, boom, lap 20, we go racing again, and then we get a safety car again in lap 40. Oh, OK, everybody is reset again, and we have another race, basically. So yeah, uh, but sometimes we do get a clean race all the way to the end. And those ones are <laughs> the sweatiest ones, because then you don't get any breeding time. It's, uh, it's a lot. I think in 100% races as well, because it's quite a long race, it actually allows people to find time to come in at some point. With the short races, they, they're what, 30 to one hour long, pretty much. 
And it's very easy for people to miss that because they don't know it's happening. Maybe there's not a lot of exposure on it or something, but um, in, a, in a short race, you know, you could go and do something and suddenly the race is over. Whereas if you do that in the creator series, you know, we're not even halfway through half the time. So, you know, in a 100% race, it, it is more, it is easy for people to come in at some point and very quickly get an idea of what's going on. And as Tom, th Tom, as Tom said, um, he, you know, it can get reset very easily just by a safety car and suddenly the race switches up and a new race has almost begun that sense. So um, no matter what lap you join, no matter what time you join, you're always entering at a point where something's happening essentially. I feel, I feel like viewers find it probably easier to get involved with 100% races because you know, in terms of strategies, as, as the guys alluded to, there are so many different options. There are so many different changes. You can have more safety cars within that amount of uh, a, a lapse. So all of a sudden, you know, you've got viewers that can now get, uh, you know, uh, change when you, when you box. Uh, they can have inputs on, on your tires. And, and that, is, that makes a huge difference over 100% versus a 50% where you know it's probably going to be a one-stop race. You know what you're doing. You know the viewers kind of already know. Oh, he's going to go hard to mediums or something. So, so there's not much variation there. It's really interesting because actually one of the biggest challenges that sim racing has is accessibility. In that when you come in to watching a 100% race, if you've never seen it before, i.e., you've never watched racing before, it takes you a long time to understand what difference tire compounds make and what difference a setup makes and what difference a safety car might make. But Perhaps that doesn't matter so much for you guys because you're specifically the F1 game and there are millions and millions of F1 fans who already understand it through the great coverage that we have of F1. You kind of have a bit more liberty to go with 100% race and throw in strategy and throw in safety cars because the audience is coming in already understand it. I wonder if it was GT racing, which has a fraction of the audience. I wonder if you could still do it. I wonder if your average gamer could come into a, a stream where you're doing 100% race and you have all this strategy and truly understand it. And that brings me to another point, right? which is, again, you kind of defy assumptions made by a lot of streamers in that a lot of streamers will say that, that one of the, the best ways to retain your audience is through engagement. Now, you guys, because it's, let's be fair, you're getting sweaty, you're competitive, it's, you know, you've got, <laughs> right? It smells. Yeah, right, that's why I'm over here. <laughs> so you're getting competitive. Um, you're also talking to each other whilst you race. So you're having to balance the racing itself, the strategy of the race, talking to one another as part of the Discord. Does this mean that you're actually limited in how much you can engage with your chat? Uh, yeah, that, that, that is a big limiting factor. I think for me personally, that's, that's something I've had to really adapt from day one where we came in and it was just, oh yeah, we're a bunch of mates, we're gonna do a 100% race. It was chaotic, it was safety cars everywhere, and we were kind of just, in a VC, you know, chatting amongst each other for, for a while. And I kind of realized that, that, yeah, you can potentially alienate viewers if, if you are just you know, solely talking in that VC. So you'll, you'll often see uh, a lot of us deafening and, and, and coming in and out of the VC. If there's a safety car, we'll generally all undeafen and kind of shout about it and, and, uh, and make a fuss. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, quite kind of, it's quite a balance of, of making sure you're interacting with the viewers and not spending too much time in the VC, really. It's quite funny as well because sometimes, obviously, we have so many different uh, strategies going on. We can like kind of trick each other, you know. Like uh, Ben asked me, like, "Yo, Tom, what tire are you on?" I said, "Like, oh yeah, soft tires, you know, soft tires, and I'm on mediums or the other way around." You know, uh, how much fuel do you have? Yeah, 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 I've got uh, enough fuel, and we are way under fuel, and we are really, really, uh, you know, wondering if we can make it to the end of the race. So yeah, it's quite fun, like the dynamic you can get out of that as well. Personally, my favorite is qualifying when. It's like Q1, Q2, end of the session, uh, a lot's at stake, someone's going to get knocked out, probably Dirk, and uh, <laughs> we, we get to, uh, to watch that unfold and we all kind of just scream at each other at the end, ah, oh, you didn't make it all. Like, we, we cheer at someone who's like an underdog who makes it into Q3, for example, and it's, um, it's absolutely chaotic, but it's, it's organized chaos, we love it. And I imagine it pushes you to your absolute limit of uh, ability to entertain when you're in that unfortunate position if you get crashed out early. Because what you don't want to do is if you're invested in it and you've got your audience invested in this race and you, know, you get crashed out, lose a wing, you're out of the race, uh, you lose a wheel, right, at turn one, you don't then be like, oh, I'm off, I'm gonna stop the stream. So then you have to essentially do a, a watch along, right, of the, of the race, and then might, but then that gives you a totally new dynamic. You've kind of gone from streamer racing to watch along of an esports series that you're in. It's totally, totally unique. Yeah, it, it, it's difficult in, when you're that person who got knocked out in qualifying. experience. 
<laughs> no. Uh, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's difficult. If you get knocked out Q1, Q2, you know, you have to sit there and you're kind of jealous of everyone else. You're watching them do their lap time and you're sitting there thinking, could have been me. <laughs> Usually it's not me, but um, yeah, it, it can be a bit of a harrowing feeling and especially in the race as well. You know, if you're in an early incident, you're set back and you're back in the pits 20 seconds, 25 seconds behind everyone. You're sort of just thinking to myself, all right, how do I make this entertaining from here? You know. At that point, I think it comes just, to... You just ask your teammate to pin it in the wall to cause a safety <laughs> car. That's it. That's it. That, that's all it takes. Um, or Dale. But, or Dale. Or da Dale is usually a good one for it. Yeah. Um, he's my Monopoly card, usually. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you have to set yourself the challenge, really. Um, and I think if you set yourself the challenge, you set yourself the goals. And, you know, as long as you try your best to meet them, I think that's still entertaining. Um, you're almost doing like a last to first challenge in that sense. And... Um, as I said earlier, like a lot of things happen, safety cars happen, incidents happen, and you just slowly start working your way back through the grid. It takes time, but you'll get there eventually. So given where we are in this hall and the people watching, I expect there's a lot of people who have either organized their own community, organized their own league, or have aspirations to do so. What lessons can they take from the content creator series? Because it's, it, it's not totally comparable because you're all starting with huge audiences in the first place. But what have you learned in this journey that would be useful for a league that's just starting out? Just work together with each other because the coolest content comes from each other, uh, bouncing off of each other. Uh, you can only do so much by yourself. So, I mean, to anybody who is here creating your own uh, community leagues or anything like that, keep going, get more people involved. And uh, I mean, yeah, most important thing is have fun because obviously we do it as a competition, but. In the end, it's all about uh, about having fun, and that is exactly what we do every Saturday. I, I, honestly, it's the like like Ben said, it's the highlight of my week. It's 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 awesome. At the end of the day, I think we would just always ask creators to be themselves. Really, um, we're the ones making the content. We're here to have fun. We're here to entertain others. So as long as everyone else is having fun, then that's the main thing for everyone, really. So Ben, looking forward to next year. Strategy lined up, ready to go. Um, yeah, I yeah, I really struggled to get going with the, the new game this season. Um, it took me like half a dozen races to, to really understand how the tyres work and, and what the, I guess, most low-risk strategies are. So, yeah, I feel like I can hit the ground running and, and really, hopefully, gun for the title. My first title uh, would be good. So, um, yeah, and the series is only getting, getting bigger. So, I suppose it's better to win when the series is bigger. So, no. unlucky, Tom. Right, so you're just, you're just, you're waiting. <laughs> Wait, yeah, waiting for the right moment. Yeah, GB is going to be cooking in season four. Season well, five. I mean, it, I'm I'm starting to become more and more of a meme now without getting my race win. I I I I must have bottled at least three or four races by now. This guy's one of them as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, for me, I'm 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 pushing for that win in this next season. So, guys, well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. I think my voice is just about held out for, for this. Well done. <laughs> thank you very much. So thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you for watching. This has been the Content Creator Series panel hosted by the Sim Sundays podcast. If you're into sim racing, I'm assuming you are, check out the Sim Sundays podcast on Spotify, Apple, and Google. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've we got the best fans here. <laughs> <laughs>